to irritate me. So I'm going to tell you why they irritate me and what we do about it. Okay. Now, I'm all, I also need to be fair to the top companies. So I will give them, I will explain why it's hard for them to do what we're asking them to do in this particular case. Um, but it's hard to find a good title officer and it's hard to find a good title company. So here's, here's part of the problem. We got to find the balance when, when we're doing a land title survey, we got to find the balance between doing a reasonable amount of footwork on these exceptions, trying to understand and map the exceptions to title insurance coverage. And we got to find the balance between that and pushing back on the title company when they haven't done their job. Okay. And so there's a cup there and I've got two, there's an example of each in this stack of deeds that we're going to look at. Okay. So real quick, let me explain what's going on for Danny and Hunter. Matt already knows, but so we've got a parcel we're trying to create out at uh, Moth Federal Airfield. I think the airfield's 1800 acres. It's huge and it's not sectionalized. Okay. So we got a title report. I'm trying to do a land title survey on this lease parcel, which is how many acres is the lease parcel, Matt? Like four? Yeah, it's not very big. It's small. It's not. Okay, yeah. so it's, 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 it's like 5% of the total. Okay. So we get a title report from the title company and they have every easement that's ever been recorded on an 1800 acre federal land holding in our title report. Does that help us? No. No. So we sent them the lease parcel description and said, please take another look and see if you can narrow this down for us. And they knock like, I don't know what they knock off five. Yeah. They knocked off a half a dozen exceptions and sent it back. So now Matt's trying to go through and figure out what really applies to this lease parcel or not. So I want you guys to understand to some, ex to some extent in order to answer that question, we might have to map every easement or lease on the 1800 acres. Okay. And it, let me explain why. So in an ideal world, the title company would send us back a smaller basket. Okay. But the way the title company works is they index documents geographically. And because we're not in a section township range and section, we're in a rancho. Everything that was on this, that's ever been recorded on this 1800 acre federal land holding has gone in one bucket. So do you understand the title company may be really struggling to even do what we're asking? You almost have to have a surveyor to do this. Okay. On top of that, a lot of our calls are to old rails or lines that no longer exist. Yeah, it's just, this is all reclaimed title, mm -hmm. title flat land, and it's a it's a mess. Okay, so having said that, the title company could have done a better job. So Matt's gone through the list of easements and he's got three docs he's having trouble with. He wanted me to look at. So we're gonna sit down and look at them. And, uh, and I'm gonna walk it. I'm going to explain this flow chart first, and then I'm going to walk, we're going to walk through these three docs. Okay. So part of our job is to go through the title report and have the, the, the land title company take out exceptions to coverage that are not applicable to the parcel. Okay. So here's the questions I want you to ask. I put a one here, but this is just the start. Okay. So when you see an exception, the very first thing you need to ask is, is it an easement deed or a lease? Okay. If the answer is yes, do your job, right? Map. Is it mappable? That's the next question, right? Yep. When we get to do your job. Okay. If it's not an easement deed or a lease, okay, then you got to come over here and ask yourself, is it standard boilerplate? You guys know what I'm talking about there, right? Yeah. Riparian rights, access to public streets, taxes, finance, financing documents, right? Okay, so if it's boilerplate, yes, leave it. It stays in, we don't do anything with it. Okay, if it's not boilerplate, okay, and then you gotta come down here. Let's see, is it an easement deed? If it is, do your job. If it's not, we wanna know, is it standard boilerplate? Okay. If it is, you can leave it. If it's not, so if it's not taxes, repairing rights, or access to public roads, something we see all the time, okay, then you got to say, you got to ask yourself this question. Why is the title company listing it as an exception? Okay. Then you want to come down here and ask yourself, all right, it's not an easement deed or a lease deed. Is it a deed? 
Okay, let's say it's a deed. All right, it is a deed. Okay, does that deed create easements? You can create easements in a deed. You can deed to Danny and reserve yourself an access easement. Okay, so if it is, yes, it created easements, then we got to go do our job. Do those easements impact our parcel? Okay, I'm going to give you just a quick example of that because it's a little bit confusing. Okay, so we got two parcels, A and B. Sorry, I own A. I deed to Danny B. And I reserve to myself the south 20 feet for access. Okay? The title company might list the grant deed from me to Danny. Not because I care about the grant deed, but because it created this 20 foot easement. This may not be in a separate dock, it may be in the grant deed from me to Danny. So we need to know that. Is it a deed? Is it a grant deed? A fee deed? If it is, the only reason it should be in the title report is if it created an easement. Okay, if it did, do your job. If it didn't create an easement, then you got to tell the title company to do their job. Why is this in here? It doesn't create any. Do I care about the neighbor's grant deed? Not if it didn't create an encumbrance on my parcel. Get it out of the title report. Okay? Now let's go back up. So you got a dock. It's not an easement or a lease, it's not standard boilerplate, and it's not a deed. All right, is it something funky? Well, what does landed mean by funky? Is it an agreement? Is it a notice? Is it a land use restriction? Okay, if it is, then you got to look at it and say, is that something that we can map? Is it plottable? And is it reasonably a survey matter? Yes or no? Okay, if it is, if it's reasonably a survey matter and we can do our job, then do it. So I'll give you an example. Let's just say we've got a parcel next to an airport and there's a land use restriction that has a, a geographic description of footprint and a, and a max height on buildings. It's, you know, okay, so it's not an easement deed, but could you argue that's a survey matter? Can we plot it? No. No, let's say it's got a meets and bounds description. Yeah, yeah then we can plot it. We can plot it. It's got a, 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 it says this is as tall as your buildings can be in your footprint. That note inside of that plot. We can put that on the land title survey, right? Now, it might not strictly be a survey matter, but uh, like we're trying to be reasonable here. We can plot that. We know what it is. Put it on the survey, okay? But a lot of times, you know, you get like you get a notice of uh, construction lien or notice of non-responsibility for some debt or something or, you know, what? There's all kinds of funky stuff. Okay, well, like, a lot of that, like, is that our job? No. Tell the title company, hey, does this really need to be in here? If the title company says, yeah, and here's why, then leave it in. But a lot of times they'll look at that. It, it's definitely, in those, in this case, a lot of these cases, it's not a survey matter. So you, you leave it in there and you put on the, in your notes, you put not a survey matter. Okay? All right. So we're going to look at these three. And we're going to run through this flow chart. I want to teach you guys how to do this. So let's look at this first one, which is the big one. 337. No, it's this 485. It's yeah, the one three, I want. Book 337. Okay. 485. Yeah, 485. Okay. So let's look at this, and we're just going to start at the top. Okay, so it says deed. Okay, so we can, we know we've got a deed. We just don't know, is it a, is it a fee deed or a, is it an easement deed? Now, if you come down here, it says between Spring Valley Water Company and... Uh, Avizio, Avizio Salt Alvinso. Company. Yeah, but what, how, would Matt, how would Matt say it? Alvinso. Okay. Yeah. So it says the party of the first part for ten dollars. Okay. Blah 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 blah. Grants, bargains, sells, conveys. Blah 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 blah. To his successors and assigns forever all that real property. What what do we have here? Is it an easement deed or a lease? No. No, it's a fee deed. Is it standard boilerplate? No. No. So, we're, we got to ask ourselves, why is this in there? It's a grant deed. Now, I can tell you just from reading through here, this is the ancestor deed to, to the airfield. Yep. I don't know. Why is it in the freaking title report? I don't know. Okay, so it is a deed, yes. Does, does it create easements? Well, yeah, let's look. In fact, it does. So, if you go back to page 494, starting in the pink, it, it lists a crap load of easements. Okay, so here's my question for Matt. Okay, I'm going to put Matt on the spot a little bit. So we've got, I don't know, there's 18 easements in here. What I want to know from Matt is, are these listed in the title reports as exceptions to coverage? Okay, don't, you don't have to answer right now, Matt. That's just a question, okay? So what I would tell the title company, Matt, is, hey, first of all, we don't know why this dock is in there, listed as an exception. 
Second of all, if you listed it as an exception because it lists all these easements, then we want to see each one of these easements listed as a separate exception to the title insurance coverage, and we want a copy of the doc because that's what we need to do our job. And what am I hoping they say? Just mix it. Yeah, they'll just take it out. Yep. But if they don't, if they leave it in, we got to go freaking check every one of those easements yep. that's in this doc. Okay? So does that make sense? It's a deed. It created easements. It's possible we got to map all those easements. But before we do that, we want to talk to the, we're going to tell the top company, hey, this looks like an ancestor deed for our, our, for the airfield fee parcel. Does it really belong as an exception to the town report? And if so, why? That's what I would, don't even, don't even bring up the list of paint, Matt. Just ask them. Why is this in there? It's a fee deed. And if they say, oh, it's in there because starting on page 494, it creates all these easements, then all right, Tile Company, do your job. List every one of those easements as a separate exception and give us a copy of the doc so we can figure out where it's at. Okay? So this, in my opinion, shouldn't be in the top report. Could they come back and tell you there are no docs for... Oh, they, they give you the books and pages in here. They're listed. Right? Oh. So I want you to understand, if they hadn't done that and there was a meets and bounds... Description for each of those easements embedded in this doc, what would I make Matt do? Plot them. Yeah, we'd have to plot them to see if they apply. Okay? I think, so here's what the, 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 the title company's got this big net, and they're just putting it in the pool, and whatever comes up with it, what are they doing? Awesome. They're dumping it on Matt's plate. So we got to kick this back. Okay. It's like, look, this may be important, but you guys, you need to do a little more work and tell us why it's important. Does that make sense? I'm not going to have you go through, it's going to take you three days to go map all these easements. I'm not going to do that if they're just going to take this out. Yep. Right? And in theory, if this is the ancestor deed, it should be out. Those easements that, that, that are created, that are cited in here, should be on the title report anyways, because it should have got carried out through all the transactions. Agreed. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I don't, I think this is just, it's just junk. But we're going to find out. All right. Let's look at this next one. 248. 248. Okay. Okay, so Hirsch Company, the grantor for a dollar gives to PG and E uh, blah 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 the right and privilege. Okay, as soon as you see right and privilege and not real property, what do you have to think? Easement. Easement. Okay, so let's start up here. Is it an easement deed or a lease? Easement. Yes. So what do we have to do? do our job. Okay. So let's look at the description and say, is this there any freaking way we can plot this thing? Okay. So here's the description. So they've got a right for basically an overhead pole line. Okay. Over this property, 112 acre tract of land conveyed by San Jose Abstract and Tile Insurance Company to Hirsch Land Company, described as parcel B in that deed recorded in book 574 at page 522, being a portion of Yingo Rancho, I'm going to say that. Okay, can we map that? 112 acre parcel. It's a trick question. If we have the document. We don't know if we can map it. What do we got to get to see if we can map it? That document they just called out. So, we got to ask the title company for that deed, right? Okay, now that's not even the easement, that's just the fee parcel. Now, next line down, they say the route of the poles and wires across the land shall be... And then they give a meets and bounds description that's based on the description of the parcel, 112 acre parcel. So, this is on us, but we need some more information from the title company. Got to get that 112 acre parcel deed. We got to see if we can figure out where the heck it's at. And then we got to try and plot the easement. Now, before we do all that, Matt, what I would say is check that existing drawing we have of Moffat Airfield and see if that book and page, see if this book and page, is, it's not. Okay, so then we got to get the deed and... Now, I have no idea where that 112 acres is. And look, Matt may get the deed from, you know, whatever, 1902 for that 112 acre parcel, and we may still not, we may not be able to figure out where that 112 acre parcel is. So then what do I got to do on the map? No. Yeah, we got to say not plottable. Uh, easement description in this book and page refers to 112 acre, acre parcel in this book and page. Unable to map. The 112 acre parcel based on the information in that book and page, something like that, right? Okay, so is that enough that, or is it enough 
where uh, you, you draft the, the parts of the um, pole line easement and find some lines in common on. Okay, so you could do that. I read through here. I don't think we're going to be able to figure out where this is at. Yeah. But Danny brings up a good point. You don't need the 112 acre parcel D if you've got some if common you've got lines. some calls and you can figure out that this is just there's no common calls. Yeah, this I is, read through that thing. Right. <laughs> so we got to get the 112 acre D, and then hopefully we can plot it. Now I suspect this is not on our parcel because it's calling out a 112 acre deed and our parcel has been 1800 acres for a long, long time. So I suspect when we get this, if we can plot the 112 acre deed, 112 acre parcel, this is coming out of the list. So the Tata company grabbed this, threw it on Matt's plate and it probably doesn't belong. This is, what I, this is my guess. Okay, last one. All right, so this is a final decree quieting title. Mm. So is it an easement deed or a lease? No. Is it standard boilerplate? No. Why is this in here? Because they're quieting title. Okay, but when you see quiet title as a general rule, you think fee or easement? Fee. Fee. Yeah. Why, do I, why is a fee, quiet title, the fee parcel in my title report? As an exception to coverage. I don't understand, right? So, is it a deed? This is like a deed. It's not exactly a deed, but it's like a deed. Okay? It's essentially a deed from a court. Okay? So, what do we want to know? So, let's look at it. So, here's all the people that are being sued by our assault company. Okay? Then you got the final decree, and they list all the defendants, and we're cruising through here. Okay, so here we go on page 393. They say... Now, therefore, it is ordered, adjudged, and decreed that the said plaintiff, Arden Salt Company Corporation, is the owner in fee simple, subject only to the easements and exceptions here and after set forth of all that certain real property designated as parcels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, blah, 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 blah. So then they give you all these parcels, okay? Okay, and I don't know why I only got three pages of this. That's all that was attached to the title. Okay, so looks like we need. I suspect these twelve parcels are, and since we're dealing with the salt company and we're in the salt flats, I suspect this is also a what ancestor deed to the airfield. Mm. So we got the same situation here that we had with the first one, right? Why is it in our title report, title company? Okay, number one. And if the title company says, oh, it's in your title report because it creates easements, all right, well, then I need all pages of the doc, not just the first three. And everywhere they cite an easement in this doc, title company, we need what? Easements. This is a nightmare. Okay. So what do I suspect the title company is going to do with this? Probably throw it out. They'll probably kick it out. Okay. So does that help, Matt? These were nasty, dude. That's why I wanted to just meet with you guys yeah, for a few that minutes. That was really they it, actually, because I've never had a kickback against the title company. So. Yeah. Now, will they throw it out so they don't have to deal with it? Or what would be their reasoning for throwing it out? So here's what the title company does. So think about it now if you're a title company. Mm -hmm. Would you rather put something that doesn't apply in the list of exceptions and have it not really matter? Or would you rather leave something out that mattered. Have something in. Mm -hmm. They're safer. It's if they have any doubt at all, what do they do? Put it in. Okay. Is it any sweat off their tail? No. Who, who does it hurt? Us. It hurts us. It's extra work for us. Right? So there's a little bit of give and take here between us and the title company, right? So we're going to push back and say, hey, listen, here's the thing. Does a grant deed belong as a list, a fee grant deed belong in the list of exceptions in the title report? Not unless it creates easements that impact our parcel, right? So maybe they don't know if many of these create well, easements so or are still so standing? Let me put it this way. There's one or two possibilities here. And in either case, the top company messed up. So if these easements that are described in either one of these two grand deeds, I'm going to call them ancestral grand deeds. Yeah, there's 14 of them is what they're saying here. No, there's 14 fee parcels. Okay, plus there's some unknown number of easements. Okay, it's going to be the same list as in the first doc, because I think these are both ancestor deeds to the airfield. 
Okay, so there's one or two possibilities here. Either way, the title company messed up. So let me give you the first scenario. The easements that are described in these documents do indeed impact our subject parcel. Where should they be? Those easements. In the title report. Listed separately in the exceptions. And are they? Matt already no. told us. No. So either these easements are valid and this doc can stay in, but those easements should be listed in the exceptions, or these easements don't apply and they're not listed, and then what did the title company mess up? If these easements don't apply, should I be seeing this in the list of exceptions? No. So either way, they got to fix something. They either put these, either the easements apply and they list them separately in the list of exceptions, or they don't apply and this has to come out of the list of exceptions. But they don't get both, do they? They can't have both. Now, the title company could say, Landon, we're not going to list all those easements separately. We're just going to say, we're going to have a boilerplate exception that says, all the easements listed in this doc. I've seen it. Okay, and they can do that, but then what am I going to tell my client? There's easements uh, that are, hey, are not manageable. Hey, dude, i got to charge you to go through this grant deed and map all the easements, and the title company still has to give me what? The docs. I still got to have all the docs. So either way, did the title company do their job? No. Because if this really applies, what should we have gotten? All the docs. All the docs. Now, it'd be different if instead of citing book and pages, this had 14 easements that all had a description in it. In other words, if the, if the, if the easements were created by this doc and they had descriptions that we could map, then we wouldn't have to bug the title company. Okay? But they don't. They say, here's these parcels that I'm giving to so-and-so. By the way, here's these 52 easements that are recorded in all these books and pages that apply to this. Well, if they're going to do that, what should they give me? Stocks. The docs that are in the books and pages, right? Now, the title company can tell me, sorry, you got to go down to the clerk recorder and get out the microfilm and find all those yourself. But then what am I going to tell my client? Charge you for <laughs> Get a new title company. That you're doing the title company's job. Right. And we should be paid for that. Um, so just how, how do they pull docs? Do they have like a big GIS database related yeah. to docs? Yeah. Cause it's like a geographic index. Okay. Cause and I was going to say, grant grant I've, I've gotten docs from them before where there's literally, it's just a blank page. So you're like, did they even read it? And so that's why yeah, I was wondering. So like, look, I, I'm, I'm beating on the title companies a little bit yeah. to be fair. This is, this is a tough spot. It's yeah. really hard. It's 1800 acres and it's old. And right? it's military. And this military, and it's just it's it's a it's a it's a it's a freaking rat's nest mess. So I understand why they're struggling a little bit. But now a good title company, when they get this email from Matt, what's a good title company going to say? We'll take a look at that. Yeah, hey, we're going to look at that. Yeah, we're going to go take another look, and we'll work with you guys. We'll get this figured out. It'll either come out, or we'll get you the docs you need. Right, and they will. That this is we're working with a decent title company. They'll do that. Okay. What I don't want Matt to do is either A, ignore it, or B, spend four days over there spinning his wheels on something that might not apply. The title company might take it right out. Yep. I'm pretty sure that PG&E easement on that 112-acre parcel doesn't even belong. It just got swooped up in the net. Just like other PG and easement I showed you earlier. That was yeah, it was way north of where we needed to be. Okay. Does this help? I yeah. need to draw this up for you guys. No, it definitely helps. All right. There's, so, there's if jobs you I can see think of a it. grant deed for a fee parcel in a list of exceptions, we got to ask some questions. Why is it in there? That's weird. Okay, Because usually today, easements are always done. If you have a relatively modern easement, is it done in the grant deed? No. It's by separate instrument or map. We don't even let you create parcels by deed anymore. So unless it's really old, we shouldn't even be seeing a deed in a in an exception to a title. That's just weird. Okay? We're seeing it now because some of this stuff's old. But. All right, cool. Thank you for recording. All right.